Dang, yeah. Bader. Oh, That's God. Yeah. Well, here we are. I don't know. Raining on the parade. Bender, you got it. Here we go. This is our last, my last introduction ever. Mostly because I refuse to do it. Not the last bro chat, though. And I'm also not going to do it. So <clears throat> we're just going to just have to look at Vader smiling over there. With his, why do you have a mustache right now anyway? You're at home. I think mine literally just froze. What? Yeah, no, I'm I'm here. Okay, with you. Was, was it Bender? Friend. I was like, I'm sitting here like, ah, this, this is, is gonna be the best intro ever, this. and then it just went it's nothing. <laughs> I think this is Bender's way of getting out of doing the intro. <laughs> it was just all stop motion on Bender's side. Did, is it yeah, still for, frozen? Uh, yeah, you're yeah. kind of back. You're about uh, was it like 360p? I think that might be the 56k yeah. dial up. Oh gosh, it's probably my interwebs. Well, yeah. it's like it was doing too I much. Do it was doing like fine for a second. Uh, what, what would you okay. do in that 35? Right. Well, I think it's recording fine, probably. Yeah. So when, when you actually release it, we're just going to be talking about stuff that no one else notices. But yeah. Anyway, oh, here let's we go. So, here we go. This is Cold Bro Chat restart. 15, I think, right? Bro Chat 15. I must be frozen because you guys aren't responding to me in real time. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> you got a delay. It's like you're talking in a stadium and you got the delay right now. <laughs> so you got to fight it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> We're gonna start this over. This is this is the worst one yet. This, this is the best one yet. Uh. Welcome to the Bro Chat. Whatever. Here we go. So Bro Chat 15, uh, and this is the final. I guess. I mean, I'm gonna let Vader kind of fill in, but for a, at least for a little while, the final KSP uh, release until you know he gets more time. You gotta stop having kids. I know that. That's my lesson learned. Like they take a lot of time there, Vader. So just dial it back a little bit. Which I anyway. I'm hey, Rain. Hey, it all the way back. Hey, hey, welcome. <laughs> this is a two-minute two, two and seven-second intro. <laughs> what, Perfect. What is, the uh, what is happening? I just want to let everybody know that Bender was also the guy back in Masawa who was like, "Have more kids. You always mm. want to have more kids." And now he's like, hey, you need to slow down on the kids. So we need to remember that when you're getting advice from Bender, everybody. Yeah. That was that was before his like last shot, yeah. though, so to speak, with, uh, hey, we're just going to do one more, and then boom, twins. So yep. was, we got two. Yeah. You know, Rain, I mean, you're you're probably coming out of the survival I, mode. You might still I think, be in it. I uh, think still in it. You know, they just turned two, which, you know, people have like, oh, it gets easier. Oh, yeah, but I, actually, so I was at Guns Garen. Uh, golf tournament two weeks ago, ran into Hyde, but not my human being, but Hyde, you know, he's got twins. He was one who called me when, yeah. uh, does he? And he was like, this is the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. And, you know, Hyde being a black border patch, I was like, nah, this is not a good sign. And then I just saw him last <laughs> week and he goes, yeah, uh, it's still really tough and really hard. So it's like maybe like three and a half, four, they like some self sustainment, some survival skills, yeah. but now nah, we're in the weeds. Yeah. yeah, no sleep. Yeah, they. Uh, it's hard to keep them alive for the first three or four years. Well, yeah, and like they're all on a different. Yeah, mine are six now, so they're they're doing better. Wait, because they can get something they, if they're hungry. But my deal is like they're always like one sick, and then a week later the next one's sick. It's always like a continuous thing, never at the same time. Like we can't just rip the band aid off and get this stuff done with. It's like, eh, you're sick this week. Oh, you're in a good mood now. You're in a bad mood, and then flip flop. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, I, I, having not experienced twins, that seems, uh, having one little one just over a year is like, you know, just chasing them, just directions and they're moving all over and having a second one probably moving in, in like an opposite direction would, would complicate things exceptionally. I can imagine probably even more than a hundred percent more yeah. complicated, but it's like an exponential thing. Yeah. It's, there's some math involved yeah. there. Yeah. Math. yeah. Well, and like, when we get text. They don't. When they were real little, like from the neighbors, they'd be like, "Hey, is this your child?" You know, with a picture of a <laughs> naked child running down the street, like four houses down. Like, gosh, like, yeah. how, like I swear, I just saw him like five <laughs> seconds ago. Like, how is that happening? They're very, they're very crafty and fast, and also yeah. don't have a survival uh, instinct just quite yet. You know. Yeah. Maybe they just think that the other is gonna be fine. You know, like. I can do whatever because I got a backup. Maybe that's just like how they're born. <laughs> got spares. Yeah. 
Do they seem like I've always heard that where like twins will have their own little like way of communicating and their own like they get they're very close and have these little styles. Have you seen that with the twins versus your other kids or no? Neither. Was that a bigger yeah, question? So. Well, it's like, I'll, well, it's both. It's a both no. of you question, I guess, because uh, it's a plural. Well, I'd be interested because yours are yours are fraternal, obviously. Yep. So I wonder if there's any difference. I mean, I don't so know. I mean, our, it's, it's science, so I don't know. Uh, ours communicate via violence. Um, <laughs> so when one has something they want, the other one wants, or vice versa, it's usually push, take, pull. You know, so like we're battling that right now. It's like. Mm, I understand that you're frustrated and your only way to communicate is to like rip that out of your sister's hand or your brother's hand or hit them. But like as a functioning member of society, you can't do it. So we're teaching them those lessons right now. I don't know. Like maybe they one day will have a communication thing, but right now it's, it's competition for survival, I suppose. (laughs) Yeah. What about you? Limited resources, you know, it's prison food. (laughs) Right. Uh, Mine never, (laughs) I don't, ours didn't ever really, there's not a whole lot of competition between the two of them. That's probably because they're, you know, just like dominating all the other children in the house constantly. <laughs> so there is competition between those two and the others. And so any violence is generally yeah, between them and another sibling. Uh, I don't know, the man, they, they're funny. They're way different than the other kids. And they have learned their, all, all my kids are really smart. Like they're all great. These two are like scary, and I think it's because they just build off each other. So they have learned to do things that none of the other kids like thought to do, you know, uh, which is a problem when they don't have survival instincts, like you're saying. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know. It's been really interesting to watch them kind of grow up. And now they, so that they started kindergarten like a couple months ago, and uh, the stories that come back from their teachers are pretty funny to hear. But they have <laughs> zero respect for authority at all. <laughs> so it's just like. One of them is like really strong willed and the other one is more, he like apologizes for the strong willed one. Anyway, they're funny to watch them together, but like our, they had to create a disciplinary system in kindergarten that didn't exist before my son Mac got there, but he would just be like, I'm not doing that. And Jeff would be like, he's not doing that. <laughs> would explain for him or whatever. Uh, so he'd come home with like cloudy skies. Like he refused to participate in music and PE and lunch <laughs> and recess. So he's like, I'm not doing that. And he would just like walk to a corner of the school and be like, I'm not going anywhere. So it's been a learning curve. Yeah, for sure. That's good. You, Fun though. You got to keep those teachers on their toes. You know, you can't just give them little angels every time. That's what we do. You know, my house, yeah. my oldest, he uh, he challenges authority as well. Wow. So I assume they would get along pretty pretty well. <laughs> Probably. The uh, random shifting gears, but Bender, do you see uh, do you see that Dragon is running for uh, office? He's, yeah, what is it, for, Senate? Uh, Congress? The Senate in Maryland, I think. Yeah, in Maryland. So, Rain, we talked to a uh, retired one-star, Dragon Tykert. He's, uh, he was like the wing commander at Edwards, was the first dude to drop a, a bomb out of the F-22 and yeah. uh, test pilot guy. And, uh, yeah, we, like, talked to him on the KSP, and, uh, and yeah, he I saw that he was, like, running for office. So I was like, oh, sick. Is he running for, like, the U.S. Senate or U.S. Congress or state? Yeah, U.S. Senate. I think U.S. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. It's big. Yeah. I'll have to look it up, but I I mean, I support his campaign because I've talked to him. Well, and he, he seems pretty legit. In fact, he, so we were like, hey, like, this is one thing that bothers me about the F-35. And he's like, oh, yeah. You know, like, I understand or whatever. And then, like, a couple weeks later, he was like, hey, I talked to this general who talked to the wing commander at Edwards who talked to the test team. And he was like, we're going to see if we can get this done or whatever. I'm like, wow, like, that's legit. You know, so he's he's one of the good ones, I yeah. think. Well, you said, uh, I think his campaign slogan is uh, leadership, not politics, and uh, re- while running for office. And I was like, I, that sounds good. I like the sound of that. But we'll see yeah. how that actually, you know, meets first it's, contact. I, not knowing anything about it, it'd be a tough, uh, tough thing to do. You know, at some point, like, you need money, right, to fund your campaign. And so even with the best of intentions and not saying uh, it changes for everyone, I, I would not want to do it. Like, at some point, you're balancing – you know, needs and like what you really want to do. But you know, like, well, I need that donation so I can buy more campaign posters and put them out there. So I get voted in, you know, that's, yeah. 
tough thing. No, to you do. just yeah. he's probably it'd be tough. It'd be tough to. Yeah. So, go ahead. Oh, man. I was just gonna. I was gonna say a useless statement. I was just gonna say he's probably making TikToks or videos or something, but <laughs> 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 not actually useful to the conversation. It just, uh, I don't even know how to do that. Yeah. If he's making TikTok videos. Yeah, I mean, that is against U.S. military and government yeah, He's policy. retired, no though. He's, yeah. You know, I mean, he's got to reach out to those That's young true. voters. That's what he wants. Yep. You got to reach them. Yep. Yeah. It's the, only way they, it's the only way they get their yeah, information. Yeah, most people on that podcast be like, oh, we're working on, you know, they'd be like, we're working on another project. We'll t- you know, it's, it'll be cool or whatever. And they're like little projects here and there. And he's like, oh, I'm working on something. It'll be kind of cool. And he's running for the U.S. Senate. You know, it's like, that's a kind of a big yeah. project, I feel like. <laughs> Big effort. Yeah. Well, yeah. the cool the cool thing was like I mean we talked to him and such a polished speaker like you could tell like he took like he was probably one of the generals that when you'd hear him speak you're like that guy knows what he's talking about but then I had, had talked to other people who worked for him over the years and they were like awesome dude like best dude I've ever worked for so it was it was one of those like where the bro check checked out so that was that was cool so it's good hopefully hopefully uh, you know makes progress does something cool. Yeah, that's what we need. Need good people doing that yeah. stuff. Speaking yeah. of generals and bro checks, you know, we uh, never got Maestro on here. You know, and that's I did. I pinged. Yeah, I pinged him. He, he did misses. say he he would do it, but uh, I know you talked to him. I think we just got to keep the pressure on. Yeah, I think it was gonna happen last Thanksgiving, so about a year ago, yeah. and then we were the ones that bailed on. Turns him. out, I mean, he's like, kind of busy. For I mean, he has like a really busy job, you know. <laughs> yeah, but. He is busy. He's not here now to defend he's, himself. He's actually doing really good work. Yeah, but he, he can't defend himself now. <laughs> yeah. So, come on, Maestro. The people want you. I'm sure he listens to this. I'm sure he time, does. Right? Yeah, it's probably the minute yeah. it drops. It's the first thing he yeah. does as he's sitting in traffic in DC yeah. for six hours a day. <laughs> yeah, what else is like, he going to ah, be doing? There's another bro chat yeah. out. <laughs> oh, well, gosh, yeah. I feel like last time we he's did this, touchdown. we got to get him. on Yeah, the we show. did. We do. Uh, I messed up the last bro chat we had. Then we had scheduled with Mace. It was all lined up. I screwed up my schedule. But the one we actually last recorded, I was in Singapore. So, I mean, I feel like we've had a lot going on the last two months. What's been new with you guys? Well, I uh, I didn't end up going on the TSP. So, uh, so that opened up a lot of time to work on my secondary job, uh, which is uh, the security side of life, which is not as fun as flying airplanes, which means I don't fly airplanes that often. So the other day I was... Flying a night sortie. Uh, the C model is kind of terrifying to fly at night. It is. I never realized it until that night sortie. The mirrors, like the rear view mirrors that you can use to air refuel, which I don't still understand because it's reverse. So it, it I'd seems... probably run into the tanker if yeah. I tried to use them. <laughs> but, the, uh, but the mirrors were reflecting my own aircraft lights back towards uh. me into my Ooh. NVGs causing more like uh, glare because I could not figure out what the, where the glare was coming from. I turn the lights all the way down. I do all that stuff. And then it's like uh, any backlighting is, uh, is not NVG compatible. So it just like complete halo. So it's like you've got this huge canopy bow and then on either side of the canopy bow is just the halo of light. So I, it is wild. Like I, I'm in there like, I, it'd almost be better without NVGs. Like this is, it's yeah. aggressive, especially yeah. on low alum nights. Mm. That was. So another oh, yeah. win for a canopy bow. Yeah, that's, which I think back and you yeah, guys. Yeah, you're going to want that thing. You guys <laughs> remember back like when we were young flying the F-16 and it was, it was one of those like heinous weather, at least at Misawa, like, and then South Carolina would get bad weather too. Like, but like just terrible weather. I didn't feel like this is super sketchy. I was just like, oh, yeah, there's another night sortie. And I had like 112 hours in the airplane and uh, no stress, not even like, well, oh, man, you could totally die here. And now in the C model, I'm like, what am I doing out here? Like, this is nuts. Like, am I the only one that's this has happens over the over the years? Do you, do you think that's based on experience and now now realizing how dangerous this is? Or is it the C model just? that bad of a plane we can say it i think uh it's it's probably i think it's my experience especially sitting in the back seat of students and having seen like holy smokes what are you doing here you know kind of thing 
Uh, and then knowing like, Hey, we don't, we don't want this to go sideways, you know, cause you're, you're on your own. But did you do, were you, I assume you did backseat night rides at Holloman. Oh yeah. Did you do, did you do, we did night S, do we do night SFOs? Uh, no, no night. Okay. Not to, no. Yeah. Yeah. No. I feel like I did. We didn't? No. And like the B straight, course. I thought we did straight in SFOs at night. Yeah. Uh, like the B course. Yeah, we did. I don't think I ever did one. If I did, and I know just somebody. Pull, the bros. Pulling closed. Well, so we would do, you would do uh, like overhead patterns at night. I would not. Yeah. Yeah, if I was in yeah. back seat, I was like, no. The only place in the Air Force you get to do them is at the FTU. <laughs> not doing it. Yeah. And I was like, we're not doing it. Like, because you're going to go to the CAF. You're going to go to Shaw. Why gonna... would you practice that? Right. To, to get more patterns. You would take off into two bag yeah. F-16 to do minimal area work and patterns. And they were like, you need to do overheads to get more patterns. And it's like, I'm not doing 13 overhead Why? patterns at understand. night with this student. Yeah. Just to get more landing. Yeah. Like, just more final approach experience. Exactly. At night. Yep. Oh, that's dumb. So we yeah. would just do radar vectors instead of 150 per pattern, you know, gas, 150 pounds of gas per pattern. It was like 400 pounds. And I was like, that's fine. And yeah. you'll, you'll, you know, you'll be, you'll be good on in the future, you know, but yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy. Like, cause they got, there's like 10 night flights in the F 16 B course. And two of them are like primarily landing sorties. And so you're like, all right. And again, practicing in, in like an over nugget doesn't prepare you to fly a tack in that's 25 degrees off, you know, final approach, the actual runway heading, like just fly approaches, what you're actually going to do. Um, but yeah, that's just my two cents. I was, I was mayor of cockpit city those nights. Okay. Nope. <laughs> that's right. Well, I was thinking, I was like, yeah, we did right. that. That does seem really Sketch. dumb. I don't, I don't remember doing overheads. I, I must have had an IP like you. That was like, I'm yeah. not doing I remember that. pulling closed all the time. <laughs> like yeah. two sorties, whatever it was. At night? Oh, yeah, at night. At night. Pulling yeah. closed. And then, yeah, like uh, you have maybe a total did. of like 13 hours in the jet at that point. So you're like, well, oh, this is normal. Yeah. Um, Just make it look like hindsight. daytime. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah it's Dude, fine. the first MBG ride, the night rides in the B course were, I remember being terrified of those. So yeah. the pattern stuff, I don't remember that much. But I remember like, not having any idea where my flight lead was <laughs> on any of those rides. <laughs> like, what is happening? And I yeah. flew block 25, so there's no, like, there's well, no link. There's no nothing. Like, it was just, like, find the blinking lights, you know, looking across at freaking Phoenix. And then, like, there are 7,000 blinking yeah. lights. Like, I don't yeah. know who to. And then six, one six time I just lights? remember, like, he called, uh, yeah, uh, he, I can't remember what it was. But anyway, I just remember the shadow of his airplane, like, crossing over top of me. Like one night, having zero idea that we had made that turn, I'm just like, "Oh my gosh, like this is sketch." But you know, I made it. Here I am. Yeah, look at you I now. I don't fly close to airplanes anymore. Yeah, I was trying to think like the scariest night story I have. We did have a guy in our B course who tried to rejoin with a cell phone tower on departure. Oh, I think mine were just like just trying to. It was it was so much work, you know, trying to get used to like looking through the soda straw, but then like looking under your MVGs, looking outside, trying to figure out like. Oh yeah, is that my flight lead or is that a star? And they're like, okay, I have to look under my MVGs, and then we're gonna go covert. So now I can't look under my MVGs and see anything. So oh, that's just terrible. Yeah. No, I had. Uh, yeah. I've had a few unfortunate night experiences. Luckily, they worked out. But when I was the B courser, uh, I we were doing night two VXTI like or to go, to like intercepts. So like you would get a night visual id and like run like what you would do as a two ship airborne but at night and it was 2v2 so there's two bad guys and two of us and we were on this like this uh unaware intercept on, or they are unaware of us intercept and so it's like your flight lead locks one you lock the other one and as i deploy to uh like uh defense in depth kind of position for, uh, their like wid, um, I break lock. So then I'm like trying to get an, a new lock as we were going to this merge. And I pull the other jet into my HUD to get a boresight lock. And I'm like, ah, not good. Like just not looking good. And I come off of that. Cause I'm like looking at the jet and I like see the lights and I'm like, ah, and then turns out like we are, we're inside of a mile at night, like 90 degrees out. And, uh, and we were way closer than 
anybody wanted to be. And my IP who's in my backseat was like, did you see that other jet? And I was like, yeah, I was trying to lock them. Like, and it was like, gosh, like, <laughs> how insane. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Seriously, there we're all going this time. But yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well and then the, uh, when I was then, you know, you always get your comeuppance. When I'm an FTU IP, I'm sitting in the back seat, and we are on our way to the tanker. Number one is obviously leading. I'm in the back seat of number two. Because at night, even though they tanked during the day, they have to get a IP in their backseat to air refuel at night. So we go, like we're just following one. And I'm watching, and he like sets mill power. And we're at like 3,000 feet away from one. And I'm like, why mill power? And I see we have like 70 knots of overtake on one. And I was like, all right, this is so like your hands kind of like go closer to the controls, you know, as you kind of get closer to the dangerous spot. And then he finally realizes like, as we're approaching 1500 feet from one and we have like a vertical offset and everything. So we're not going to like hit one, but we're going to pass one like a big dog in a second. <laughs> and uh, he rips the power to idle rolls inverted and does like a 6G pull away from one at night. And again, we're not going to hit him. We're just going to like pass. <laughs> and uh, he like, we like check away. We're now like a mile and a half because, you know, every big correction always like is insane. And we like roll up right. And you can kind of hear him like, like in the, you know, in the intercom. And I was, I just go hot mic and I was like, don't do that again. And then just go call him like, <laughs> and uh, yeah, well, and cause he knew it, you know, like there's nothing I'm going to tell him that he, you know, could have done, but yeah, it was one of those, like, I'm just there for the air refueling. I'm not there for anything else. He's, he already has demonstrated he can fly at night. And, uh, and then turns out he was, he was struggling, but yeah, it's, uh, I think we've all been there just like, Oh, this is bad. Yeah. Well, yeah. An overreaction, still a reaction. Did you guys see that? Uh, was it a J 11 and the B 52? That guy was overshooting like a big dog. Oh yeah, yeah. He saw. Yeah. I didn't even know they had the same speed brake as the C model. Those things are very yeah, similar sure to the on Eagle. the backside. Yeah, it's strange. They have similar things. I mean, yeah. it's not like they steal yeah. anything ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, it was comical to see like the huge board come up and like yeah. trying to slow down on the overtake. And he has yeah. to have closure or at like I I... airspeed. Were you going to get the video? Yeah, can we get the video? Yeah. yeah I mean, I was, was, this is going to be, uh, all right, we're gonna, this is, uh, you know, what what could go wrong here? That's right. All right. We got to uh, give so, feedback on his on his rejoin. That's right. All right, so I'm going to share. We should do every bro chat. And just pull up some random yeah. video of somebody flying and just make fun of them. It'd be great. <laughs> uh, so let's see. Hit share. Can you guys see the? Underneath shot. Okay, that's this is like the DOD, their press yeah. release. Oh wait, no, this is the old. This is the guy just chilling. So I'm about to find another one. But while while we do this, oh, yeah. you can see the guy just hanging out on his wing, while I find yeah. the. Uh, it was B fifty two, right? This last week. I mean, that's not a B fifty two right there, though. No, props. this is a this is a B three. Yeah, got props on the old B fifty two. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, what a, uh, the bear. This, this is the one that got released. They did all these. Yeah. Uh, you got flares popping off. Um, did you guys see all these? I'm sure you did. No, these are I, like no, I haven't out. seen all these. Oh yeah, they released a ton of photos because it's all like just hanging out on the wing. I'm guessing that's a P8. Oh, yeah. Look at, all, Look at that. All He's not wobbly. very stable over there. Yeah, I know exactly. it's like clear air, dude. Like he's probably he's, re reaching for his Polaroid camera. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was loud. That's some audio. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. I'm a, uh, while, while you guys are viewing this, I'm trying to pull up the, the B-52 one. Yeah, you can see. So everybody so looking at the... are so massive. Huge. It's hard to tell. 48-foot like wingspan, but, right? Yeah, they're just enormous. Like a Viper next to that just looks just... Tiny. Well, that was the other day. I was flying the C model, which is smaller than that plane. And you put like a couple C models on the wing of a 135, and you're like... 35 is not that big. Like the 135, right? Yeah. The, uh, like the KC 135 tanker is not that much larger than uh, than a C model. All right, here we go. This is the unprofessional intercept of the USB. Unprofessional. 
Oh, you know, Divas. Some strong language there. Yeah. Really send the message. Yeah. Right? A lot of, uh, all right. I'm just really proud to say we pulled this up, so. Yeah. yeah this Look at that. Technology. Look at that speed break. C model esque. You know, cool like, I was just fun. like, oh, I mean, how, like, I don't even know how you do that. It's so bad. It's north. Look at that panel. That's just yeah. super cold. You notice right? that? Yeah, look at that. That is. That's weird. Yeah. I wonder what those feet are. It's just freezing to death. <laughs> <laughs> That's his environmental control system keeping him nice and cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Yeah, look at that, how hot those motors are. Like the up top, you know. Yeah, like on top of it. Well, I wonder if if they have the same speed brake. Maybe they have the same like exhaust port for their uh, for their ECS up top. Oh uh, yeah. Cause that's uh that's definitely a good IR signature on the the top of the aircraft. Probably yeah, was, not what you want to. Yeah, probably not what you want, huh? I was thinking yeah. anytime having like the Viper in there is like I, you know, it's not that you know. Yeah, yeah, and that's uh, yeah. heat matters when you're shooting uh, advanced IR missiles. All right, we're gonna watch this again because I it took me all this time to pull it up, but just <laughs> look at this clown. Look at all those that tracks clown. that it's building now. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good targeting pod work. Yeah. It is. I know, because this is definitely not tracking right now. Dude, that's, I mean, that's close. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think, I mean, I'm sure it's just like pitch black. You're out over the Taiwan Straits there. Oh, man. Like, that's not really what you want if you're just cruising around to have that thing show up on your wing. Those are All some right. of the darkest nights, too. Like flying over the, like the Sea of Japan in the middle of the night with no moon, yeah. and there's just there's just no light, Man. no light, on the wing of a tanker, and you're like, I don't see a thing. I see three lights in space, and I'm like, fifty feet from the tanker. You're like, this is <laughs> so dangerous. This is not where I want to be. <laughs> oh my I'm gosh. To, I'm trying to remember. It was someone going through pilot training or maybe the B course, and he was talking about. Being at Spang on the tanker, you know, he was a young flight lead. And, you know, one of the dudes in the formation was just spatial D, like you read about, and was just doing barrel rolls around the tanker. You're like, how like terrifying yeah. and just close to tragedy that could have been. So, yeah. Night. Well, that spicy. was uh, chaos. Bender, you remember? Chaos yeah, was an ADO. Yeah, I remember in the old and, tornado. Yeah. And he said, I think there was a video of it that. One of the dudes gets spatially deed. He's literally doing barrel, barrel rolls around the tanker, and Chaos like talks him off the ledge, talks him back onto his round dials, and gets him to recover his aircraft and not crash into any one of the at least two other aircraft that were around, which one of them being the massive tanker. Yeah, it's. So I feel I was, like I always yeah. found it like the minute I hit the weather, I would get spatial deed, like if I was on the tanker and just feel like I'm in 90 degrees of bank. But then. Yep. You're just fighting it. Or if you're kind of in the soup where, like, there's clouds, but you're hanging out on the wing. I mean, by the time I got more and more experience, I realized, like, oh, like, I'm, I feel like I'm in a right-hand turn and bank, but in reality, I'm just floating higher and higher on the tanker and, like, had to force myself down low. But that's miserable. Yeah. Well, I feel like yeah. the milk bowl is the worst, where you yeah. almost feel like you can see far, but you don't know, and there's no horizon, or, like, false horizons. If there's any... Tanker pilots or boom operators listening. Oh. When you say coming left, can you start the turn like a second <laughs> later? Because everybody <laughs> is like, okay, we're going left. And then they don't turn. And then everybody on the wing does this like weird, like twitch of like, yeah, oh, oh. no, 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 we're not going now. Yeah, yeah. Just to well, sh shake your inner ear too. Well, exactly. And that's what like blows my mind. The other day we were like in the clouds coming left. And then, like, it seemed like 10 seconds goes by before we actually start the turn. And I was like, oh, we're turning. And then I'm like, why are they still turning? Why are we? And I was like, oh, no, now, now <laughs> we're turning. And I was like, this is not my favorite place to be. Uh, I was just, man, I got an email a few weeks ago, and they wanted us to talk about tankers. I need to find it now. <sighs> yeah, um, we can talk about tankers. We can talk about tankers. He was a boom operator and <laughs> wanted to hear some, hear some stories, which I feel like we've talked about booms. Let's see. Um, yeah. Mm, 
I'll have to look while we talk about it. But between, I do feel like we, I between the three of us, like the the joke one. I mean, it's like they yeah. always find the clouds. But yeah, I mean, Tanker saved the day. Yeah. Tanker saved the day first and foremost. But <clears throat> and they find every bit of weather out there. Yeah, while the, while yeah, they make you earn it, which is you know I respect. Yeah, that. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna make this easy on them. They gotta earn it. So if you want our gas, like you better. Yeah, you gotta work for this stuff. Yeah, oh, it ain't free. Do, you awesome. know one thing that uh, am I the only one who when I call. Nose is cold, switch is safe, that my nose is not cold. It's never, I've never had my nose cold. <laughs> I don't even know what it means. Nose, I, I, say I assume it. it means my radar is not currently radiating while I'm right. running a rejoin on the tanker with my radar. So yeah. my nose will be that cold. Would, if that's what it means. Yeah, I, that's what yeah. I assume. I'm definitely lying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. my nose like, cold, switch okay. is safe. Yeah, sure. When I'm a half mile away, like, yeah, yeah, yeah I'll snooze my radar and I'll, <laughs> I'll go get gas. But yeah, like... When I'm th- when I'm six miles away on the rejoin, like no no no, nose is definitely not cold. Switches are safe, so you're welcome for that. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> boom operator. It. It's just something. Oh, we yeah. Said. yeah. All right, yeah. This, Jordan. He sent this. This is a few weeks back, but uh, September 25th. We haven't had a broach yet. In all fairness, since August. So oh, yeah. I mean, this is. But it's uh, Jordan. He says, "Hey, I'm a KC 135 crew chief. If you have time on the next broach yet, can you guys tell a few good stories of hitting the 135 or KC 10?" <laughs> well, Jordan, I think we can. <laughs> Yeah, we have a lot. I mean, between us, between yeah. us, we have what five deployments of, and then countless. I mean, Rain, how often were you hitting tankers as a demo pilot? Fairly Constantly. frequently. Yeah. 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 Fairly frequently. Yeah. If so like, life was good. Yeah. Which, shout yeah. out to the Knoxville guys, McGee Tyson guys. Oh. They were always hooking me up because I just need that. You know, if I can get gas over like Knoxville. And the clean Viper, you pretty much can get, like, almost, not to the West Coast, right, but for most air Sipping. shows. Sipping yeah. gas up there. Yeah. yeah. Get up in the high 40s. I will say the cold. tanker units, they're the most bro units probably that there are. Yeah. Like, they're never fussy. They always hook you up when they can. So they got something good in their culture, for sure. Like, it's, it's good stuff. Yeah. yeah. I think That's I what did, I found. I've done, or I, hit, I did my, yeah, go ahead. No, I was, well, I, I was, I was agreeing. I was, and I'll throw another name out there, Brad Beyer. He's now retired. He sent me a message on Facebook not too long ago. But he was one that uh, he would always hook us up, go into Heritage Flight, because we'd have not a complex thing, but, like, we'd have Raptors coming out of Langley. We'd have us, and then uh, occasionally A-10 meeting up there. Like, those guys, like, always hooked us up. And same way I was, like, dragging westbound. Like, they just... Tinker guys just make it happen when yeah. they can. They do. Yeah, not to not to rain yeah. on the tinker uh, tinker appreciation uh, because go. they do. They do, yeah. We can, like, we can sandwich up. it. We can yeah. sandwich it. Good. <laughs> bad, yeah, it's good. The Oreo. We yeah. learned this early in our careers. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Oreo but sandwich the, feedback. Here we go. I'd say the only time where I've been like, all right, was <laughs> when we're deployed and it is super dark, dark, dark. Like over the Sea of Japan dark, no moon, no light. And the tanker has one light on, on the entire aircraft. And it is the boom light, this little <laughs> like NVG compatible light for an entire, I don't know what's, it's probably 70 feet long and got like a 90 foot wingspan or a hundred and some foot wingspan, like a massive plane that has one light on and you're rejoining on it. And you're like, I can't see a thing with or without my NVGs. I'm going to run into this airplane and not me because I'm not going to ask for help. But, uh, but other people would be like, Hey, can you turn up their, your lights? And they'd be like, no, we can't. And this is a 135, And they're like, Nope, sorry. So you would like the highest risk of their night, if they knew it or not, was not getting shot at. Mm-hmm. It was right. getting run into by one of us who was too prideful to be like, Hey, can you turn on your lights? Cause I, I don't know where you are. Uh, but then you'd go to KC-10, and it'd be like a disco ball in the sky. So I, I don't know what it was about the 35s, specifically <laughs> in uh, the Iraq or, yeah Iraq area. But like light discipline you, was strong. Yeah, well, it's like, yeah, it turns out you're a huge chunk of metal. Um, if anything was going to touch you, like, that's the thing. It already sees you. So your lights don't matter. Yeah. It's not some man pad. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's true. I, uh, here's my – I got one, and this is probably to start them. It was a beautiful day. It was a beautiful, like, February day. And I'm going from Shaw to Arizona. The skies cannot be any bluer, right? Like, it's the most beautiful day you've ever seen in your entire life. Just paint this picture. 
three ship of uh, F-16s. We're coming out of Shaw. We got a two ship of Raptors coming out of Langley, and we're going to rejoin over Nashville with the tanker. The tanker's coming out of McConnell, and then we're all going to truck westbound, right? So we're all, you know, a few moving pieces to time everyone, make sure they arrive at the same time, right? We're, I don't know, call it 28,000 feet. Again, it's really important to know it's the most beautiful day you've ever seen because my number two goes lost wingman right as I initiate the rejoin with the tanker. And then he's, he's gone. And this is over in Nashville. He ends up like 4,000 feet low. I, I guess big sky theory, right? Um, you know, there's just no airliners down there, but it takes forever to get him back on board. Three finally sees him, like talks my eyes onto him. We get him rejoined. The Raptors just hang out in the Bozo sphere because they're like, I'm not going to get my nose in it. But the Raptors also like trying to give me point outs because he found them. But I get behind the tanker and I'm just, I, again, cannot be any more stable because the air is just so clear and beautiful. And I'm just sitting back there and they're not moving the boom. I'm talking to them. I'm trying to talk to them on the radio, nothing. And then I'm starting to get tight on gas. So now I'm starting to get aggressive with my hand signals. It's like, put the boom in my jet, you know, like the door is open. It can't be any more open. Let's do this. Uh, and so we ended up like on guard, getting to switch frequencies, getting a different frequency. He's like, oh, you know, hook up. He's like, sorry, sir. We weren't talking, so I couldn't hook up. I'm like, dude, I could not have been any more stable. And it turns out you knew an F-16 and two other ones are going to show up right behind here. It's like, oh, we couldn't talk to you on the radio. Like, how many times you disconnect? Like, just plug the jet. So that was like the... <laughs> Not bro yeah. thing. He must have been like on a check ride or something. Like, no, don't give him gas. We'll make him divert. You know, like, oh. which technically we have. That's calm I mean, it's out supposed to be calm out anyway. Yeah, <laughs> right. Like I don't need yeah. to talk to you. Don't, I show don't there. you put that boom out if you don't want me to just go plug into yeah. it. Yeah, like it's we're stable. <laughs> right? We know what's going to happen here. We've done this a thousand times. Let's not play coy. Let's just make this happen. Yeah. Give me the gas. <laughs> Gotta buy him dinner yeah. first. It happened to be in Guam this summer. We blasted in the whatever. It was a complete mess anyway but so a sortie out of guam we were supposed to hit the tanker or whatever and then they were on some frequency who knows and nobody was controlling anything anyway so we were couldn't get a hold of the tanker but we could see them so we like pull up and then you know we're pretty short on gas anyway and they're just like <laughs> just orbiting they're exactly where they're supposed to be we have an arct we just can't talk to each other perfect but they're like they just have that boom tucked away they're like we're not doing this until we get contact so I like pulled into pre-contact. I'm just like, yeah, you know, I like need the gas, like to the boom operator who I can see like sitting there with the boom, you know, I'm like, just make this happen, please. Or whatever. And to their credit, they eventually did. We never like got radio contact with them, but yeah. you know, we all just like, we're just like, put it at like, we need it now. Or like this whole entire mission is just gonna go home, you know? And like, we just wasted everybody's time, but yeah. So they made it happen, but it's funny how often, you know, it's not as smooth as we, hope that it would be seems to always be a fight i mean but oops. he put the boom out i got the gas it was yeah, yeah. It, all, it all worked out turns out you don't have to talk to anybody so yeah, you don't was, need to yeah well bender on our our deployment uh way back in the day there was one night i don't even remember what night it was i i didn't nobody ever talked about like hey there's going to be like i would say moderate to severe turbulence in the airspace nobody brought it up but I like cruise over to the tanker because it's like, you know, you're going to this AR track. So I like drive over there and I rejoin on the tanker and it is, it is insane. It is the most turbulent air I've ever flown in, in an F-16 and we're just hanging on. And they honestly, they probably should have been like, this is too dangerous to get gas. They literally said, Hey, we don't think it'll work, but you can try it. And at that point, I'd, I'd AR'd like 200 times in the last like month and a half. So I was like, I think I can make it happen. And uh, yeah, it was like idle the mill, like unloading, adding G, like the whole spectrum of flight control inputs to stay on the boom. But, uh, but they made it work. They easily could have been like, no, like this is like, because I was all over the window just trying to stay on the boom. And they, they let it happen. So they must have been like a at the end of their two months there where they were very confident in our ability and we were, we'd been there for a while, but yeah, I appreciated whoever that crew was for, uh, for helping like weasel five two get gas. What? Yeah. Almost 10 years ago. So uh -huh. old. There's definitely had yeah. some big gloves. You know, like the move, uh, the tanker tracks downrange, you know, or just like come overhead or go wherever you need to. 
So again, this is me and complimenting the uh, the tanker crews. Had tanker. Uh, it was with poker. We were coming back. We we're along the Iraqi border, uh, western border, along Syria, flowing back. Bad weather day. Um, hit the tanker. She was a new boom operator, I assume, because you know at this point again you've tanked so many times and like hanging out on the wing waiting for him to get gas, and she is just writing her name on top of the jet, hitting every antenna and just <laughs> completely scratching it up. And you're like, dude, like you, like you have not moved one inch. Like you can't be in a more perfect position. But uh, I remember him. He was very short and tense uh, at one point with her. Like, you know, like plug the jet right now, or we're like we're having to divert to her beal. She eventually figured it out, but, um, you know, it spanned everything from, like, the ones you don't have to say anything. You just slide right in position, get your gas, go to everyone's new at some point, I guess. You get get the old, like, the guard tankers that are out there, and then you check in with a boom, and it's this guy, you know, it's like 62-year-old boom operator, (laughs) you know, smoking for 75 years before he came out of the boom. It's like crazy. It's like, yeah, you're pre-contact, whatever. Like, this is going to be a good night. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't care. He's probably not even looking out the window. He's just like, whatever, do your thing. Yeah. You know, you always get, yeah, you get good gas from those, the guard units are, that's where it's at. Can the, have you guys tanked off the KC-10 in your new fighter platforms? Can the KC-10 boom move you guys around like you can the Viper? Yeah. Yeah. Even the C model. Like it's a, C model's a big jet. But yeah, it doesn't, yeah. it's not like the F-16, but the, uh, uh, but it's, uh, but it's definitely noticeable. Like the 40, 46, like you have like added power. Like you kind of stay high on the power. Like, oh man, this is like, I can feel the jet pushing into the boom. Stand by. Really? Yeah. I was like, is that my door? <laughs> You're muted, Rain. What were you saying? You got you to gotta touch that mute button there, Rain. Look at that, man. We just we were doing so no. good. <laughs> Vader got a knock on the door, trying to cover it. I was just wondering, have you tanked off the KC-46, Vader? I have, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it was pretty chill. It was in the day, though. I mean, actually, I think we did it at night, too. I, and it was fine. Yeah, it was, uh, I don't remember, it, it didn't feel that different than the other tankers. I like KC-135s. Those are my, that's my jam. So I, I, probably because we've done it over a thousand times. KC-10s are fine, but it takes a little bit. It just feels like you sit way lower than you do on a KC-135. Yeah. So I'm never sure exactly where the right spot is. But uh, KC-135s are, they're good. Especially when they're like, hey, autopilot's off. And it's like, okay, this is going to be good. You know, because the autopilot on those things is just, a, it's a freaking nightmare. Where you're like, one and S, you know, like 1.7 G's up. Like point seven G's down, one point seven G's up. Like for twenty minutes, like that's pretty miserable. That's quite. Yeah. So. Yeah, I thought the forty six is, is. It feels like the KC ten. Like it seems very similar. Yeah. It's just a. Uh, it's a big plane. Like it is crazy how large that plane is compared. Like the one thirty five to the KC ten seems large, and then the KC ten to the forty six isn't doesn't seem that much larger, but you could tell it's like a big plane. Is it bigger than a KC-10, the 46? I don't know. I'd be guessing. Because it's a 7.6, right? 7.5, 7.6? Yeah. Seven, seven, so seven, it's 7.6, seven, six, yeah. So I don't know. Mm. Is that a is that bigger than a DC-10? We should know these things, right? We're, I mean, I'm not an airline pilot, I don't know so I assume things. you guys would know these things. But. I was joking. KC-10s are big. I mean, there's like three categories of airplanes. like the massive ones, which is KC-10 qualifies in my mind. Like massive airplane. C seventeen, C five, yeah, triple seven. Yeah, all those. Yeah, triple seven has to be jealous. enormous. Yeah, there's different variants too. Yeah, triple seven's big. I mean, when you take off weighing, you know, three quarters of a million pounds, like that's that's a big plane. But I did joke. I joked the other day no with way. the. That's how. That's how much. Seven hundred weigh when they take off. Yeah, I've taken off seven hundred sixty-six thousand pounds. Are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah, seven hundred sixty-six thousand pounds. We, yeah, going Hong that Kong to is Memphis. Insane. That, yeah, it's a, it's Just amazing. The, the thing flies. Too, right? Two engines, and it's still got some left over. What? Yeah. Gosh. Gee, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They Gee, are good motors. That's impressive. Yeah. yeah. 760,000 pounds. Yeah, it's crazy. <sighs> that blows my mind. Yeah. And, you know, and then it can go fly for, you know, 15 hours, 16 hours. Just. Gosh. America. Yeah. That's America. impressive. I mean, some science and math was going on to make that happen. But yeah. I, I, um, 
God, that's, that's right. unfair. I thought when I heard 190,000 pounds out of a tanker, I'm like, that's, 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 that's dangerous. But 760,000 <laughs> yeah. pounds. I think, I, I mean, a little bit different too, like maybe – Call it 250,000, 245,000 pounds of gas. Um, probably, yeah, 170,000 <laughs> pounds of Just to do cargo. some rough math. Yeah. How many gallons of gas? You said how much gas? 250,000? Yeah, you can call it, just call it 250. I mean, it's a lot of gas, you know, and then go fly it's for only it. only 37,000 gallons of gas sitting in that airplane. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't want a spark to go off. Yeah. Nope. No. I was going to say, yeah. Thing, here, I mean, here's the thing. I think I've said it. I mean, I don't know. I've said it in public or not, but I was joking when I got hired, right? And then one of the guys in my class, Navy Top Gun dude, we were kind of joking because we got the tour of the ramp and we got a tour of the 7.6. And we're like, we're going to the 777. I really, I, I couldn't pick a 777 up out of the lineup. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know what an Eagle looks like. I know what a Raptor looks like. <laughs> flanker. I'm like, 7.6, 777. I mean, now I can. I got to see the wheels down. Uh, you know, the main trucks on the triple seven's got six wheels. So there's the little, little cheater for you. A three fifty's got an easy for that. me with the, what's that? Yeah. I said the difference between seven, six and seven, seven you're talking about. They look the yeah. Same. Yeah. That's like my, yeah. my, the easy button for me to like ah, figure it out. And then a DC 10 versus, or I guess a KC 10 versus, a, uh, or MD 11 versus like an MD 10 winglets. MD 11's got the winglets. So DC 10, uh. Yeah, I mean, it's same, same for yeah. MD10, basically. Yeah, Someone's going to hear this, but like, this guy's an idiot. He got all this wrong, <laughs> yeah, but exactly. whatever. Every Dude, every captain I flew with the Delta was like, this guy's an idiot. Because they'd be like, hey, you know, follow the 7 3 or whatever. I'm like, I can't, yeah. I, you know, like, can you even yes. tell number? Like, I have no idea. <laughs> 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 Where LaGuardia is like, especially when they get into the region, they're like, you know, follow the CRJ, whatever. I'm like, dude. Yeah, I don't know what that they're is. They're all CRJs. Like, <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> like, can you count them off for me? Like, I don't get yeah. it. Yeah. I What's feel that? like. And that didn't change. Nine months later, I still didn't know. So. Yeah, it's not going to change, even yeah. still. I feel like the, you know, true aviation enthusiasts are like, gosh, these fighter pilots should like planes more. It's like, yeah, we like using planes for things, you know. It's, yeah, they're tools to. Yeah be used well even when you brought up the video of the intercepts i was you know i had like a little bit of a like scared for a second that you would ask any of us to vid any of those videos i'm like eh, yeah. don't don't yeah. don't do that <laughs> the, even uh, fighter jets i'm like eh. we'll, we'll play oh, this yeah. game the, oh uh, yeah this will be fun yeah <laughs> we'll stump the dummy don't, won't be fun. don't yeah. do it i was like i was looking through this i uh, like oh yeah just go ahead and uh, tell me what this guy is here you know, if I if I can't see everything's a make twenty nine. If I can't see the make wanker, 29. you know, then I'm like, I don't know. The problem over there too <laughs> is that see there we got a J ten. There you go, a little J ten. Yeah. Which and then we got the see. I know the ones I don't want to see in real life. Like if I saw that in real life, I'm like, ugh. I told I told you guys That's I was in the elevator with J ten pilots, right? I, t- I told the story in Dubai <laughs> on a FedEx trip. No, this yeah. is one I, or when you were on a air show. Yeah, it was like oh, the two. Two Su two Su thirty five. I got on the elevator. Then two Su thirty five pilots got on the elevator, and then uh, three J ten pilots. And the elevator music's playing. It's just like do 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 do. That's do, pretty know. righteous. This yeah. is wild. But yeah. seeing the J ten fly, you should have them on the podcast. Yeah, they were <laughs> super friendly. Uh, were they? How was that? Was it pretty cold in there? Just uh, environment wise. Yeah. So the Russians were pretty. They spoke English. The the Chinese didn't speak any English, or they did, and they just didn't allude to it. Yeah. But the Russians were pretty personable. They wanted to see the Raptor, which yeah. at that air show, anyone could see the Raptor behind the cordon. So, we're like, oh, yeah, we'll show you the Raptor. But we want to see the Su-35. So we had to show them the Raptor first. Like, we we said that it was a whole deal, right? Like, coordinating it. So they came out the next morning to get a tour of the Raptor. And then the next day, we went out to get a tour of the Su-35 when they didn't have any cordon, but they had, like, six film crews like filming us walking around. Um, you know, we had all our maintainers and several other, other people walking around it, which it was interesting They're, I mean, they just, you know, they were fighter pilots, really. I mean, I think that's what it comes down to. Um, yeah, they just spoke Russian and flew, flew Russian planes, but, um, yeah. the Su 35 is no joke too. Yeah. That's like a, that's the, a big the interesting aspect of yeah, seeing its form. demo. It is like, it was doing 
raptor esque things, you know, flipping and flopping around. But every day its demo was a different length, right? Because they can't take off with full internal gas and do all the crazy stuff. Unlike the Raptor, right? It's the same demo profile every single time. So if you're like, while you got apples and oranges, I think a testament to the performance of the Raptor when you're talking about doing all these crazy, you know, defying physics maneuvers, uh, the Su-35, while it can do some really cool stuff, seeing it in person and like really paying attention, like, Oh, obviously, maybe it was a little hotter on you know Monday, so they're a little heavier on the throttle, and they burn more gas. So they had a nix like two maneuvers uh, out of it, so that's kind of interesting. I thought, but yeah, well, that I'd and be I mean, pretty there's... nervous. I think at an air show with the Su thirty five doing its thing, I'd be like, eh, you got to be ready to run. I feel like yeah, when, like Russian air show pilots are performing. Yeah. Like, you know, well, you're sure I mean well. the safety. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'm not sure, like, what their safety, you know, mechanisms are over there. I know that the U.S. Air Force is pretty, you know, ex- no, I wouldn't say excessively, but, you know, we're pretty conservative. But Su-35, I'm like, uh, is he going to make that turn, or is this going to be a fireball in the crowd? You, well, know? you know, the other thing, these, so, like, Dubai, it's a little bit different. Those air shows are so restrictive, unlike the U.S., right? You are in Canada, most watching are like, hey, you have a set of perform- maneuvers that are like validated by your command and accepted by the FAA or Transport Canada, whatever it might be. Like they say, hey, you, like we trust that your, your leadership has vetted this. But going to Dubai, and I think actually that air show is like happening right now. All Everyone has a couple days to practice, and then they have to validate with the Emirati air traffic control. And they won like the takeoff. You guys seen the demo takeoff, not a fan of that one. They won like a hundred feet versus like 10 feet. And then they have all sorts of like altitude guns and lasers and all this stuff. So if you go too fast, if you go too low, they call you on it and they sit you. So if you don't qualify on the Sunday, then you can't fly for the Royal day, which is like a big deal. They bring all the Royals out for, that same with like Bahrain. So Bahrain, when I did that show, this is like the second, you know, my second year, first year in Dubai, um, all the leadership over there, air force leadership's like, Hey, just play by their rules. Don't stir the pot. So, okay. Yeah, sure. I'll just fly at a hundred feet. It's lame. Go to Bahrain. I now know all these guys in a five. They've seen, you know, me fly multiple times. And now we're over in Bahrain. The first day I do, I talk with like their air traffic control. Like you have to be at 50 feet or higher for the takeoff. I'm like, that's kind of lame, but whatever. So at night I'm in the lounge with the Colonel and some of his staff and we're just talking. He goes, no, he's like, you don't change anything about your performance. I'm like, it's not a big deal for me to fly 50 feet. It's lame to fly 50 feet, but I can do it. And he goes, nope, don't change anything. That's not, that's not safe. I'm like, if I fly at 10 feet, this place is going to melt and it's going to come to you. It's like, nope, do it. So like the next day I did the normal takeoff and it melted, but he just, he wanted the fight. I think he was going (laughs) to retire. So he's like, bring it, you know, rest of the week. I flew at 10 feet for the takeoff. So yeah, they got weird rules. I've been in the backseat for that takeoff. It is (laughs) no joke. You're like, Oh, it's late. I'm like, it's terrifying. Actually (laughs) is what it is. 50 feet is terrifying. (laughs) 10 feet. 10 feet. How do you know the gear yeah. still? Like you're not going to, you pretty much just get the gear off the ground and then just bring up the gear and keep <laughs> yeah. yourself there. Yeah. Just let me, you know, just be a champion. Don't, don't yeah. descend. Yeah. Well, that's, the, yeah. you're going to be Jet, really, uh, you know, yeah. but you're in a block 50 full afterburner. Oh, it's clean. Like that jet does not want to descend. Like you'd have to, yeah. yeah I, I mean, you cooking. could obviously scrape it into the ground be a just big yeah. fireball, but yeah, you got to really, to push forward on that Gosh. stick a little bit. The old clean block 50, man. What a yeah. freaking yeah. rocket ship. Yeah. I What's remember that? we would climb out on radar assisted trail departures in mill power, or you'd set like, what was it, 850? And uh, you'd be 20 degrees nose high in the weather. Yeah. And you'd be like, this is dangerous. But like the jet <laughs> would do it, even not in mill power. And you're like, holy smokes, this is crazy. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yep. The way it's meant to be. Yeah. I'm curious. I wonder, you know, block seventy. I wonder how that how that guy performs. Yeah, I heard that they're not because yeah. they made it way heavier. 
The F thirty five is she's a slow. She's a slow climber. No. Yeah. No, I was just gonna say that the I heard that the porn. Is she oh, slow yeah. to get up to speed. But then once it's fast, it stays fast. <laughs> it's the it's the stadium effect. Timing. Just you know, just yeah. expect two second delay for anything that's happening. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, well, we really have the exact same like yeah. exact same tolerance for a pause. What? Like, and I'll you need... so F thirty five, she's a heavy, she's a heavy beast, but she got a good motor, so she's slow. To, like the takeoffs aren't impressive, you know. It's it's just a lumbering thing. But once it gets fast, like it, like it'll out climb up. Well, I don't know about a clean block fifty, but it can climb like a freaking banshee once it gets quick. So it, it, that's pretty fun to see. I mean, you can be up at in the high 30s, 15 degrees, and those high accelerating. Like, you know, you're not bleeding off airspeed, which is pretty cool. So it can get going, and it can't slow down. You know, it's also you know heavy with no drag, so you get the nose down at an altitude like that, and you know, just screams. So it's it's got it can move, and then you try to turn it, and it's you know, it's like you get the barn door out there, and <laughs> it all falls apart. All that energy is just womp, gone. Womp. Like, That's dang. what I don't understand because I'm not an aero major, I, so I don't yeah. actually understand how planes fly. Uh, but the when it's like, oh yeah, it's like super fast. It's got tons <laughs> of energy. It's got all this thrust. But the moment you start turning, it all goes away. And I'm like, wait a second. Like, isn't it still flying? But I guess you're just you're bleeding energy so atrociously fast that it's like it's gone before you make any use of that energy. I assume it's just a small wing. Yeah, it's it got, got to be small. And you're absorbing all that energy. In <laughs> yeah, the but is going it though? Yeah. All that speed's going all into your spine. <laughs> right at the bottom but of I my mean, spine. Are you actually ripping like... 9Gs? Because everybody I've talked to is like, no. Like, you have to be like, you have to pretty much try to get 9Gs no. in the 35. Yeah, you got to work hard for it. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't think I've pulled 9Gs in this airplane. I might have it when I, you know, on an HC ride when I'm trying to do it. But no, you don't. You're not trying to. I'm not trying to pull nine G's. I think you can uh, more frequently in you know high aspect type rides. I mean, it's got it, the motor is like no joke. It's a she's freaking pretty powerful. So low altitude, you know that thick air, and once you have airspeed on it, it you know it's got it's got a lot of thrusties. Uh, but the thing that's awesome about, I would love to, I think a Viper is going to kick my butt every time. Like we get in a high aspect fight, I'm going to lose. But if you, if I get behind a Viper, I mean, it's just, or if you, even if a Viper, a 3K with a Viper, I just want to try it one time because you can go from 350 to zero knots in, you know, like two seconds. It's awesome. You know, you just, cause we have, you know, it can overshoot the AOA or whatever. So you pull like it's max AOA to keep flying and then you hit the wind button and it goes, you know, and it overshoots. And so then it just becomes like a falling giant piece of heavy metal. And a Viper can't. Like, what's a Viper going to do? It's just going to fly. It's going to fly right past it. You can't bleed energy like an F-35 can. So it doesn't sound like a strength, but it is. Like, because you can get to zero flying airspeed, like, really quick. Well, does it make the same... the floor, but... Like, do you make yeah. the same noises, like, in Top Gun, you know, when you hit the brakes? Like, it's a lot of clicking... You know, yeah. <laughs> those type noises in the cockpit. Yeah, lots, of, lots of slamming of yeah. little loose pieces of metal. No, it's not like that. Yeah, man. It's very, wondering. like, nice tracked throttle. You mm. know, it's very smooth feeling. Yeah. Yeah, the stick, the stick moves. I can't remember. If it, I think it moves a little bit more than a Viper stick. Right? The mm. Viper stick didn't move at all, right? No, it was I mean, a quarter of like an inch. Maybe a, yeah. a tiny bit of, yeah, was that what it was? Quarter inch of play. Yeah. I, yeah, I think that 35 stick moves a little bit more. Yeah, I, I don't know. I wish you guys could just fly it. It'd be fun to, yeah, I'd like fly. see what you guys thought. Yeah, I flew the sim, yeah. but not the real deal. So you know that's not real. But it was like the it's uh, a the demonstrator sim. What's that? It was like the demonstrator sim they take around to like air shows, or was it? Oh no, I was out at Luke, so I like ah, flew okay. Luke's like yeah. full up sims, and yeah, it was it's capable. And the nice part is because it's like a follow on to the F sixteen. So like all the switches like do very similar things and you're like, ah, like I don't yeah. know this, but I have an inkling what button I want to hit here, you know. But yeah, it's uh it was cool. The thing I thought was sick was the how you could just like with a lot of AOA and then just step on the rudder and it just like you know, in the C yeah. model it's like aerodynamically you're moving your nose, but like in the 
in the 35, it's like a very sterile, like a perfect nose movement rather than like my wing's stalling, my wing's not stalling, my wing's stalling, my wing's not stalling, you know, as you like kind of rotate around the sky in the C model. Um, it seemed cool. I don't know how it really is in the plane. But. Yeah. I, th- I mean, you have to fly it, right? To get it flat <clears throat> instead of, well, you, you described this, I think, on a previous episode where you think you're doing like this nice pedal turn, but you're really, you're just kind of like bare rolling <laughs> in the vertical down. <laughs> Uh, yeah. That's what happens in the F-35 <laughs> if you don't do it correctly. <laughs> but, I see, uh, yeah. So I flew a stone, no, sorry, Brick the other day. Brick is one of Vader's nice. friends. So he's new to our unit, so pretty new to the F-35. And he's like, I just want to practice defensive BFM, you know, all day. I'm like, this is going to be awesome. Like, <laughs> anytime. <laughs> Perfect. So I got to be the offender the entire time. He's like, I just wanted to work on my pedal turns. Anyway, he has, one of his last ones, he... He just like nailed it, like, and I just watched the jet like in the horizontal just rotate around, or I'm like, dude, like that's what it's supposed to look like, and that presents, you know, hard problems or more difficult problems for the offender to stay behind. But uh, I still gunned him; it was fine; it was good. Um, <laughs> still but you have him. to get if if guys do it wrong, then you just have this spiraling airplane that you know just like plummets beneath you, and then you just follow it and shoot it the entire time it's doing it. Um, while I think they're doing this awesome defense, they're just getting gunned the entire time. But if you do it right, like flat like that, then the off, if the offender doesn't do anything, then you either you overshoot or you get misaligned. But if you you know if you do it right, if you go kind of vertical and then follow through at the right time, then you know then you can follow it. But um, yeah, the F thirty five it's it's interesting. I think uh, there's some guys that could probably you know hold their own. It, you know if you're flying it like brick fluid that day, then I think it, you'd probably survive some engagements with some vipers and stuff. But if well, you're wrong, you're just going to soak up a bunch of electron bullets. <laughs> it's all it's all about getting slow. That's what you got to do. Just know the Viper is going to transition to offensive. And then when he goes for the gunshot, you're like, you, hit, you do the top gun. You hit the brakes and he's going to fly right by. And then, yeah. yeah. Just have it's him like, help you, really you can. It's transition cool. to offensive. Yeah. Oh. Well, uh, I know... We're getting about, oh yeah, we're just a little over an hour, an hour and two minutes. So an hour of talking, two minutes of the intro, which we will leave in. <laughs> I cannot wait to hear no. how that plays back. <laughs> yeah. I, I, have we ever edited an intro out? No. Like, and we're not starting today. No, not but some are funny 15. and some are, yeah. you know, bad. That one's going to be bad. So we should. Yeah. It, That'll it's, be good. It's probably a two. Yeah. You know, it's not going to be put, great, but. Put some music over it <laughs> and it's going to sound hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> just pauses stepping on one another bleeding uh, yeah, a little rusty because they're like this is yeah. this is the last straw that was the last intro <laughs> i was gonna listen on this podcast before i I'll, quit uh i think since the last one though right like i think it'd be interesting to get your guys's take you know ukraine's getting f-16s what, what do you guys think about ukraine i don't think we talked about that last time because it wasn't yeah. a thing but now it's a thing in theory yeah the old vipers in what? ukraine mm. yeah well, they're getting, because they're European, whatever, like, foreign uh, military sales Vipers that are already in Europe that they're going to get. I think they're already training at Tucson. Yeah, they're, the, they're, the, yeah. they're here. Yeah. I assume it is. Oh, yeah, it is, it is Tucson. Yeah, for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah, so, yeah, so. they're already out there. And I talked to somebody who was knowledgeable on it, and I think it was, like, a two-month course. Like, I think some of the dudes may already be on their way back. And then they're going to do like a quick top off over there. And then, yeah, I think, you know, I mean, somebody told me that the jets are like, cause they're for military sales. So they're not exactly us, but they're like block 52 esque. So like good, good thrust, like pretty advanced for a F 16. Um, but it's, I think the question is like where, what, what like other, other than just jets to fly, like what performance is it providing? Like it's probably for providing a lot more than what MiG 29s were, you know, or maybe still are. Yeah. Yeah. I would assume. Oh, well, I don't know. I, I'm not sure. I don't know what the IADS looks like these days in Russia. You know, I assume they still have some double digit threats, you know, they have to Yeah. active. Right. So it's not, it's not going to give you any more survivability, right. Than a MiG 29 probably in that environment other than it's made, you know, I assume they're going to shoot harms since they're shooting, well, gosh, we got they are we they, open that's, source. That, the class. That's, that's open, open source. source. That's open, yeah. right? Yeah, okay, they, they had a Whew. MiG twenty nine shooting a harm. Oh, we gotta edit that. No, yeah, that was like yeah. a year ago. They put a put harm, and you are like, 
Okay. Yeah. So yeah. yeah anyway, so Viper's made to do it. So I assume that's going to give them some additional capability as far as how effective they are with harms and stuff. Plus, I assume they're shooting U.S. missiles off the rails, which is going to give them some advantage in the air-to-air realm. So yeah. I think it is overall probably a much more capable fighter. <clears throat> but an SA-21 is going to house an F-16 as easily as it houses a MiG-29. So like that's the part. Yeah. I'm like, huh. I, I don't want to be that. I guy. brought into question the the tra- like, cause would you feel comfortable like I mean jumping? Well, I, Vader, you're a perfect example. Like TX into the the Eagle, but that's like U.S. to U.S. plane, not Soviet design to U.S. design. So you're talking language barriers, weapons differences, plane differences, like all those things. And then you got maintenance on top of that too, like maintenance and logistics. I think yeah. a lot of a lot of challenges. It sounds. It sounds like an easy fix. You're like, oh, sweet, just give them vipers yeah. and they'll go wage war. And you're like, that yeah, doesn't, yeah. Like I, I finish my TX took four months, so cut that yeah. TX in half, two months. Could I have shown up? And I was already doing that mission set in another plane. So like I was already doing air to air in the F-16. It was like learn air to air in the C model, where they're like, they've never really done like seed, which I. I think it's probably just going to be a platform from which to do what they were doing now, you know? So I don't think they're going to like break the mold and start doing seed. Like we know seed. I think they're going to do what they used to do just in a Viper now, but I think it's going to, the it's going to be better just because it's a platform built for all those weapons that they were using rather than like having to trick and having all these, I don't know, having to science their way, to being able to drop those bombs and shoot those missiles. Well, I think to be fair too, I assume two months of your TX was just learning how to use chalk, right? Yeah, that's, that's true. That was, uh, yeah, the first sure. month only yeah. was chalk. <laughs> chalk. You can only take notes in chalk. You can... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> your lineup cards are all uh, in chalk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have a, a slate board. Oh, man. <laughs> that's uh, uh, Oh, uh, we like to joke. Awesome. We like to have fun. Yeah. Well, the uh, I kid, I kid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. I love it. Ah, but the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can go draw angry things on your chalkboard that's in yeah. front of you that I can't see right now. <laughs> the uh, well, what I do want to say before we get going, and uh, I just want to say thank you to all the Kodiak Shack listeners. Uh, I do appreciate everybody, all the support you've given us, all the people that reached out. Um, you know, it sucks that we had to pause the podcast for an indefinite amount of time. Uh, just life going crazy with uh, work and uh, ACSC, which uh, zero oh. stars do not recommend. N- nerd. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I guess I'm preparing to become a lieutenant colonel, which is insane that you just don't think that's going to happen. Yeah. Braided yeah. belts, here you come. <laughs> that's right. My uh, T bus. <laughs> <laughs> which i have some actually <laughs> yeah i was gonna say like that's an actual thing <laughs> yeah cut off jean shorts yeah that's right yeah my uh new balance well, 904 you're still gonna sell the hats though right i assume no new that's episodes right. we got the hats. always buy hats from yeah Bader. always buy hats hats are always always open uh, no yeah thank you though everybody i do appreciate all the support it's been awesome and uh bro chats hopefully we'll we'll keep doing these and keep having fun yeah, but I think we have to keep doing bro chats. Yeah. I mean, this would be the really crappy yeah. way to end the bro chats if you just... We're not... Yeah, yeah we're not doing that. Yeah. No, yeah. no <laughs> I guess if you pin on Lieutenant Colonel Vader, maybe you got to call What's it something. Yes. Well, I thought either one of you should be pinning on Lieutenant Colonel somewhere between the realm of two and three years before me, so... Yeah, well, I, I, you, you want to hear my... I don't think I'm going to get promoted. My, my thing coming up, because my OPR didn't make it to the board with this whole switch, but... That's neither oh, here nor there. Oh, the OPB didn't. So yeah. did you do ACSC already, Rain? I did. I did it. So you did that. You have a deck, I assume. Yep. You're going to get promoted. Well, so here's, you know how like the new, like the OPRs are like narrative and then PRFs are narrative. This is a really long, long story. I'm going to try to make it short, but the, the short you story is. the bro chat talking about this either. By I know. That's what I'm saying. Like I, cool all, all that happened was like, it came back with, Hey, just do it on the old OPR and we'll submit that. And it didn't get submitted in time, but you know, oh. this is how much sleep I'm losing over it. <laughs> None. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. so we'll you, we pull up a, you we pull up the uh, pictures again, and you can ID some of these things, so yeah. we at least have something that's lethal. Well, that, we was, <laughs> that was the funny part. The moment I started looking at them, I was like, I don't know what I actually can say, because then I'm going to talk myself into saying something that I'm not supposed to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I think yeah. I do that on most episodes. Yeah, yeah so, it's fine. It's fine. Say, at least I feel like I before, do lose sleep sometimes when – re-record and i'm like oh gosh like, yeah, is, that is that open source is that yeah. okay for me to say before the pictures are up, probably j11 the uh, su 35 j16 i'm gonna i'm just gonna say all those names probably yeah be fine yeah those are all I, good. well you know we could just we could comment on the quality of some of this uh photography these guys did let me see yeah it's a great polaroid yeah it's great look at that i'm gonna hold on to that <laughs> yeah. uh I assume you can just take your phone and record everything you're doing in the old C model, right? Oh yeah, well no, you can't. You know, you can't. Yeah, pretty much. Well, steam gauges. Nobody cares about steam gauges. (laughs) It's got an advanced motor though, or a radar. Yeah, that's definitely J. He's got a speed breakout too. I know. I'm just thinking like, think about like how high these guys are, and I can't. Do you need a speed brake when you're, I don't know. Whatever. When you're, well, apparently when you can't control so closure. Go back to yeah, that picture real quick. 50 knots, yeah, 4,000 feet. Which one? Guys. The one that was just, just that, the that, speed brake? Yeah, just to see the missile stations of that old uh, yeah. that guy. Oh, yeah. That's... So this is when we, this was on a podcast a while ago, but, you know, this is the C model technique in a gunfight is if they roll up behind you, is to quickly level your rings, wings, go to A, B, and then try to fly away from them, right? Didn't you say that was, what's your IP, that one? Oh, yeah. This is why you don't do that. Like, <laughs> that guy is right. going to shoot you the eight Patrick's. times. Like, yeah. Like, why is that well, part of your, like, oh, this is a great defense. We're just going to go really fast the, in front of their nose. Yeah, the <laughs> assumption is that they, they don't have those advanced missiles. The assumption is you're fighting a, you know, you got to the merge because they got no, nothing left. You just... Because honestly, like, I think we all would. And Ben, or you said this on a previous one, like, you're going to rip every missile prior to that merge. You know, like, if I'm there, it's like, it's because I have no missiles left. So there is an argument like, hey, if he, if you're going to, if there's no missiles, then hey, like, getting slow with him is probably not where you want to be. Because gunning someone at 600 knots at the floor is mm-hmm. uh, is super yeah. difficult. That's I've uh, done that that's in many a time. That's a, that's a problem. I mean the I don't the think they can there, shoot though, all those missiles. Yeah, that's probably true. Yeah, like fourteen of them. That's like a lot of missiles. And are you going to bank that they just don't have one that you just didn't see? Maybe. That's true. Yeah. Go merge with a Somali. That's probably where it's going to be. Be like a yeah. I don't know what they'd be in like a Cessna. Yeah. Sop with camel. Just uh, yeah, right. <laughs> a canvas airplane. My radar can't uh, lock him. He lives in the notch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good times. Good times. Yeah. Well, Vader, is there anything else you you want to say? I think you should just wrap this thing up since this is going to close out the Kodiak Shack for you know a week or two before you're back. Yeah. Well. Uh, well. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, all the uh, Reigns Patreon uh, subscribers. And <laughs> you missed that bender in the beginning. Still on that Patreon. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe yeah. he maybe That's he true. said it, but we didn't hear it. Right. Uh, we'll, we'll find out in the playback. <laughs> yeah. We'll find but, yeah. out in playback. <laughs> but uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, uh, KSP the, the listeners. Intro is me not saying anything. Yeah. All of us good. just kind of wondering <laughs> why the connection was bad. Uh, well, it was a good connection to start with. That's the thing. It was great before we hit record. Sorry. You, you had a great closing going. I don't want to interrupt you anymore. No, it's good. The uh, But it's been great. We'll get another one of these bro chats on the calendar, uh, and we'll uh, we'll keep pumping these out. But thank you, everybody. We appreciate it. And uh, reach out to Rain if there's more uh, <laughs> topics or uh, or pictures you want us to comment on, especially uh, bad rejoins and, uh, yeah, and uh, scary uh, plane <laughs> videos. Yeah. yeah. All right. See you guys. Awesome. See you guys. See ya.